Pharrell Williams' song, Happy, is one of the most successful songs ever recorded. If you've seen the movie Despicable Me 2 or listened to the soundtrack, then you probably have a pretty good idea why it's such a great tune. Happy was first released almost eight years ago on November 21st, 2013, and within three weeks, the song had begun peaking at number one in the United States and the United Kingdom and Canada and Ireland and Australia and New Zealand <laughs> and 19 other countries. Within eight months of the debut, Happy had sold 12 million copies worldwide, becoming one of the best-selling singles of all time, making Pharrell Williams and the folks at Universal Pictures really happy. Not only that, but it was also nominated for an Academy Award for Best Original Song, but lost to another catchy little tune, Let It Go, from Frozen, a movie about a really unhappy childhood. But I digress. Pharrell's song is popular because it so profoundly resonates in people's lives. It invites listeners to be happy in the midst of everything. The song was certainly timely. A few months after its release, USA Today published a study revealing that upwards of 70% of people polled were unhappy with their jobs. And then last year during the pandemic, a survey commissioned by the University of Chicago found that Americans are the unhappiest they've been in 50 years. It's like people are frozen in unhappiness. So let me ask you, are you happy? We all have an idea of what creates happiness, getting something we don't already have, making more money, being close to family, good health, boating, golfing, eating, hiking, driving a new car, having more technology, going on a vacation. Wow, I know, it's a long, long list. We've all got our own version of what brings happiness. It's no surprise then that people have been seeking happiness since the beginning of time. And since the beginning, God has had a lot of things to say about happiness. In the ancient language of the Bible, happiness is defined in a lot of ways. Happiness is being contented, joyful, peaceful, full of gladness. Biblically speaking, the most common word used for happy is blessed. However we translate the word, from a biblical perspective, being happy is connected to just one thing, being in a relationship with God. Being in a relationship with God that brings happiness. And the more that relationship is nurtured and developed, the happier we are. As I said earlier, we're in a worship series that we're calling In the Habit. And we're exploring discipleship habits that connect us more deeply with God in ways that shape our lives into Christ-likeness. And today, we're exploring how being in the habit of dwelling in the scriptures is a powerful habit that roots us in Christ and enables us to bear fruit in our daily lives. When Jesus calls us to follow him, he's calling us to an apprenticeship. An apprentice is someone who watches the master and then does what the master does. At first, it's awkward and the work is imperfect, but with enough practice, an apprentice develops skills that become habits. At first, challenging and requiring concentration, the work over time and with training becomes effortless. This principle holds true in so many areas of our lives. You wanna get better at tennis? Well, practice the basics until they become habits. You wanna play the piano well? Practice the basics until they become habits. You wanna become a more fruitful follower of Jesus? Well, then again, Practice the basics until they become habits. In our series on habits, we want to lift up the habits that help us become more like Jesus. And this is probably more important now than ever, mainly because we're living in such a challenging time when people are so unhappy. Well, that brings us to Psalm 1. So I'd like to do this together. I'd like to wonder how becoming apprentices of God's word, God's law, God's direction, and God's guidance will impact our lives. 
What I want to do is to read this psalm for us, make a couple of observations, and then suggest three habits that you can practice that will help you grow as an apprentice of Jesus. So here's Psalm 1, verses 1 through 3 from the NRSV version. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or take the path that sinners tread, or sit in the seat of scoffers. But their delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law they meditate day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, which yield their fruit in due season, and their leaves do not wither, and in all they do, they prosper. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, a few observations. First, Psalm 1 is what's called a wisdom psalm. It provides practical spiritual guidance and timeless wisdom that's as relevant today as it was when it was first written centuries before Jesus was born. If you have a study Bible at home, the topic heading for Psalm 1 is likely the two ways. One way, the way of God's law or God's word, is the way of happiness that leads to life and more life. The other way, the way of wickedness, which really, come on now, you just got to admit is a terrifically juicy biblical word. The other way is the way that leads to destruction and death. The psalm writer writes that those who are not in a relationship with God are not happy. They are unwise. But those who are in a relationship with God are happy. They are wise. It just makes sense. Second, Psalm 1 describes the happiness of an apprentice of Jesus as someone who meditates or reads about or thinks about or talks about what God has to say through God's word. And God is always speaking through the word. An apprentice sets a habit, practices, and figuratively chews on the words of God. This word of God feeds and refreshes and enables apprentices of God to live full, thriving, fruitful lives. The purpose of getting into God's word is so that God's word will get into us. Third, An apprentice of Jesus is happy because that person delights in the teaching of God. The phrase, the law of the Lord, is a reference to the Hebrew Torah, the first five books of the Bible, which is essentially a collection of instructions or teachings. Those who delight in what God says through scripture, through these teachings, are blessed. They're happy to delight in that law, in that instruction, in that teaching of the Lord. Psalm 1 describes the happiness of those who find delight in God's word. The person who does not follow the advice of the wicked, verse 1. The person whose delight is in meditating on the law of the Lord, verse 2. And that person's life will be like a tree cultivated and cared for under the best circumstances so that it never ever fails to produce fruit, verse 3. Thinking about this week's one big question, as apprentices of Jesus, how will we dwell in God's word in a way that helps that word dwell in us? Well, I want to give you three different methods, three ways of making dwelling a habit in your life. Journaling Psalm 1, praying Psalm 1, and watching for Psalm 1. First, journaling. Not everyone is a journaler. I get it. But you know, this kind of journaling is pretty straightforward. Let me explain how it goes. First, you read the whole passage, paying attention to the words or phrases that stand out, and then just write down what you notice. Second, identify words or phrases that you particularly connect with. Like when you read the passage, you find yourself saying, wow, that's my experience, or wow, I totally get that. And then third, write down the words or phrases that do not make sense to you, things that you may not understand, maybe things you even disagree with. It's okay to disagree. And then finally, write a few sentences about your interaction with the psalm. That's how you journal the psalm. Second, another way, praying Psalm 1. Another way to dwell in God's word is to pray God's word. 
So here's how this goes. As you read Psalm 1, you can use a translation that works for you. The Message Bible is a great version to use for praying scripture, but you can use just about any translation that's meaningful for you. As you do that, use your imagination to rewrite the psalm in your own words. Now, here's how I might do that. Verse one, Lord, I know I'm happiest. I'm, I'm truly blessed when I'm following you, when I'm looking for you, when I'm seeking you instead of following after other things. Verse two, well, God, your word is delightful. I know that. So make your word my delight. Make my delight your word. Help me always to find my delight in you. Then verse three, well, God, your ways are sure and strong and provide a sturdy foundation. Your ways bring guidance in all things. Friends, you get to use your God-given creativity to reimagine the passage as a prayer. There's no right or wrong way to pray, honestly. You get to use the inspiration that God breathes into you using the words that seem just right for you as you dwell in the word. And then third, watching for Psalm 1. This is, this is really engaging. Watch for reminders of Psalm 1 each day. We've looked at the first three verses of Psalm 1. So for each day of this next week, Read just one verse in the morning, memorize it if you want, and then as you move through the day, watch for real life examples of that verse during the day. For instance, today or tomorrow, read verse one. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or take the path that sinners tread or sit in the seat of scoffers. What you'll do is watch for people around you making wise decisions. Watch for people who are asking for help from trusted family and friends, and then notice how that impacts their lives. You might do that for a couple of days. On another day, <clears throat> read verse two. Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law, his teachings, they meditate day and night. So what you do is you pay attention to people that you may know who have a daily practice of reading their Bible. Ask them about their habit. What works? What's helpful? Do they use a schedule? How does daily meditation create blessing in their lives and in the lives of others around them? Again, you can do this for a couple of days. Just dwell in that. And then one more day, read verse three. They are like trees planted by streams of water which yield their fruit in its season and their leaves do not wither. In all they do, they prosper. I love the line, like trees planted by streams of water. What a lovely image. So who do you know who is like this? What are the habits that they've set into place that help them become like this? <laughs> well, that's some good stuff. Did you get all of that? Hey, at the end of our service today, I'm going to provide you with a link to a guide that we've created for you that will lead you through all three of these different methods step by step. Ways of making dwelling a habit. Journaling Psalm 1, praying Psalm 1, and watching for Psalm 1. We'll give you that link, so stay tuned for that. But finally, friends, I keep thinking back to those images of our granddaughters carefully reading scriptures in their Bibles and then writing the words of scripture in their journals. The act of doing that over and over and over again is part of their apprenticeship, part of their learning to become more like Jesus. And you know what? I can only imagine how that practice will be part of their lives for a long, long time. Let's pray. Gracious God, we pray that you would that you would move your spirit in and through us to help us create the habits that make us more like you. Particularly today, as we think about dwelling in your word, we pray that you would help us set that habit, that, that your word would get into us so that your word can move through us to the world around us. We pray all of this in the strong name of Christ. And everybody said, amen.